Hey foodies, thanks for watching. I'm so excited. I love Valentine's Day. Not because of Valentine's Day, but because the fun things that you get to make and enjoy. There's chocolates and cookies and sweets and all kinds of things. And today I want to focus on cookies. We're going to make a Linzer cookie, which is like a shortbread cookie that you would have for Christmas, but why only have it at Christmas when you can have it at Valentine's Day too? And today I'm using Frankie's gluten-free all-purpose flour because it works amazing. And so we're just going to jump right into it and we're going to mix it all up. So you want to start by adding three and a half cups of flour into a separate bowl. So there's my half. And then there's one, two, and three. And what I really love about shortbread is they're such simple recipes. It's flour, butter, and sugar. That, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to add my quarter teaspoon of salt. Easy peasy. And I'm just going to lightly stir that up. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to add my butter. And that looks like a lot of butter, but this is going to make a lot of cookies. And that's three quarters of a pound of butter or a cup and three quarters. Sorry, a cup and a half of butter. And I need to add a cup of sugar. And a little bit more. Okay. And I'm gonna mix the butter up and the sugar, just like you would a regular cookie, until it's all combined. The butter I have is at room temperature. Okay, so I'm going to just scrape this down because it's all nicely combined. Mm. There we go. At this point, I want to add my vanilla. And it's just a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're going to combine that. Okay, I'm going to scrape the walls down one more time and then I'm going to slow, I'm going to add in the flour. So I'm going to add about half now and then mix it and then I'm going to add in the other half. Okay, it's just starting to come together. I'm going to add the other half of my flour and I'm going to mix it on low speed just until it all comes together. Okay, so I have mixed it, and I mixed it a bit longer than, I, than the original recipe called for because with not mixing your cookie dough too much, you don't want to develop gluten. But since this is gluten-free flour, we don't have to worry about that. And we want to mix it and whip it and, and really get everything all really combined so that all the, the moisture from the butter gets absorbed into the flour. And and since you don't have to worry about this getting tough, there's no real risk of running the mixer a bit longer. Okay, look at that. It looks really nice. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my counter. And I'm just going to scrape this and dump it out onto the surface. Oh, look at that. That looks great. <coughs> Get off as much as I can. There we go. And then we want to just make sure it's nicely combined. A bit more flour on the top. That 
It feels amazing. That is great. Okay, so I need some parchment paper. And I'm gonna put the whole thing on a piece of parchment paper. And I'm gonna put another piece of parchment paper on top. And I'm gonna lightly roll it just to get it pretty consistently evenly rolled. It isn't the finished product. What we're doing is we're just rolling it out a little bit and we're gonna pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes and let it cool. And it's because we're using butter, you want the butter to be formed to, to hold its shape. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on a cookie sheet. And that's gonna go in my fridge for about a half hour. See you in a minute. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes and this looks really nice. It's a little on the soft side still, but I still want it to be a little bit pliable. And I'm just gonna put it out on my surface. It's okay if it breaks up, because we're still gonna roll it out. I'm gonna get some flour. And I'm gonna roll it out to about a quarter inch thick, or about a half a centimeter. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And you wanna take a large round cutter, and we're gonna cut out rounds, which are the bottom and the top of each cookie, because a Linzer cookie has a bottom cookie and a top cookie, like an Oreo cookie or, or a, a jammy dodger and then the top part of the cookie has some kind of a cutout and I thought because it's Valentine's Day or Valentine's Day is in a few days I'm gonna cut out a heart which is quite fun and these we can put on a separate tray and bake as little tiny cookies or we can just put it all back together roll it out again and get more Linzer cookies and I think that's probably what I'm gonna do Okay, and so I've cut all these out. I've got the parchment paper which we used for the fridge part, and I'm going to reuse it and lift my cookies onto my cookie sheet. And oh, they look just darling. Let's see if I can pop that out. And I'm gonna do a tray of tops and a tray of bottoms. What I really like about this cookie dough is you don't have to use it all at once. You can wrap it all up, put the leftovers in the fridge, and make fresh cookies for up to about a week. Because this dough will last, oh that one broke. This dough will last for up to a week in the fridge I would presume because it's just butter and sugar. There's no egg, there's, there's really nothing in it to go bad. And if you want to use a dairy alternative to butter, by all means, go for it. You can, you can make these vegan if you want. Okay, there we go. Look at these. So I'm going to put these into a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes or until they're just golden in color. And then I'm going to pull them out, let them cool, and we're going to do the last bit, and then we're going to try them. See you in a minute. Okay, so the cookies have come out of the oven. I've let them cool a little bit. I'm gonna let them cool a little bit longer. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a little bit of my strawberry preserve. And I'm going to just take a couple spoons of that. And I'm just gonna mush it up just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Now a jam will work as well. That's all I've really made. And I also want to try a marmalade, because I think marmalade would be really nice. And I'm going to mix that up, and you can see it's really gloopy, and that's okay too. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to start putting it together. So we're going to grab two of our cookies, 
and you want the solid part, and we're going to put a dollop of jam on there, or a preserve, and I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. Maybe a little bit more there. There we go. Okay, oh, that looks great. And we're going to spread that one out. Okay. And then, take our tops, and I want to take a little bit of icing sugar and dust the top of the cookie. And then, lightly place that. Oops, that one just broke. But that's okay, I'm going to eat that one. But look at how pretty these are. They're just delicate and wonderful and they smell really good. So I want to bite in and I want to see what it's like. Mm. There's so much air and lightness. They're very delicate. I think I need a cup of tea for this because it's so nice. I ended up not needing to bake mine for a full 20 minutes, even though it said 20 to 25. Mine was closer to 15. So do keep an eye on the cookies. Let me know how long you bake your cookies for in the comments below. Thanks for watching.